Hey everyone, it's been a while since I made a video. But I have binge watched Star Trek Picard twice. So I'm here to give my thoughts on it. Now, a lot of people have already reviewed at least episode one and two and three. Um, but I'm not them. A lot of them did not like this series so far. At the same time, I'm not judging that, okay? They have their opinions. And even Angry Joe said it has potential. He's just mad on it now. And he's hoping it gets better. But he also said Terminator Dark Fate sucked. And, well, it's all right. Um, Star Trek Picard is TNG 2.0. It picks up, obviously, after the events of Star Trek Nemesis, a movie no one cares about. But things of note are Data dies at the end of Nemesis. Spoilers. And it also includes the supernova explosion at the start of the 2009 J.J. Abrams Star Trek. So why that movie takes place in the past in an alternate dimension caused by a rift created by the black hole. This series, Picard, is 20 years after that, roughly. 14 years after that. Because um, they always talk about fucking Mars. 14 years ago. The fucking pilot mentions it. Episode 2 mentions it. Episode 3. I'm sick of hearing about the sense. Okay? We get it. Okay, they attacked Mars. Romulans may or may not be involved. They probably are. We don't know yet. So, <laughs> this is going to be a spoiler review of 1, 2, and 3. Basically, this chick named Dodge has an awakening. Romulan assassins try to kill her. And for some reason, she has an image of Picard. Standard, standard, standard shit. An alias type fight scene takes place. And basically her positronic brain wakes up. And she knows Kung Fu. Throw a little Matrix quote. And she gets away and she has a vision of Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> oh. I will grant the reviewers this. Episode 1 has a really slow start. But it gets better. Um, basically, Dodge is proved... Well, Picard suspects that Dodge is Data's daughter. Um, basically, 30 years prior, on the USS Interprese, Data pa made a painting. And it turned out to be, basically, the, the painting looks just like Dodge. Which, you know, I went back and watched that episode. No, it doesn't. But, semantics. That was 30 years ago. I'm old. Um, so, yeah, semantics. Uh, so, he, he, he goes to uh, Daystrom Institute. I'm studying more than Picard does. Um. Uh, and he meets Dr. Jurati, who worked with Dr. Bruce Maddox, a character I thought would never be mentioned again in Star Trek history. He was a one and done from season two of TNG. He's the one who wanted to disassemble data. <clears throat> For science! So, that's pretty much episode one. A few more stuff happens, like. Romulans come after Dodge and Picard, and Dodge dies. And we finally see the Borg Cube, and we find out Dodge has a sister, Data, or, ah, shit, Dr. Asha. But let me backtrack a little bit. Dr. Dumb Shit, Dr. Girati, um, I can't stand her. But that doesn't mean the show's bad. I just don't like her. She basically does the techno babble dump saying that somehow a positronic neuron 
has all the information, all the data's memories, and one fucking motherfucking positronic neuron. I don't want to go Dr. Dan on you right here. That's like saying a single neuron of your brain, be it small or big, contains all your essence, all your memories. I've seen better pseudoscience and fringe. Come on, Star Trek. You can do better than that. Again, I don't hate this series. It's just little things like that bug me. Just wait till we talk to about uh, the Commodore. Ooh, she's come. Ooh, this will not be a two-parter either. We're getting there. Anyway, fast forward. You meet, you meet twin sister, Dr. Soji Asha, on a freaking board cube, which apparently after Romulus blew up or whatever, and I hope they fill this in in future episodes, the Romulans find a board cube and begin researching it with Hugh from Iborg as the director of the artifact. Uh, and that's pretty much episode one. I kind of agree with Angry Joe on his rating. I think it was a six or a seven. Um, but because I'm a huge Picard fan, I give it an eight. Yes, it's a slow burn. But I can name another popular show that started out horrible. Which I can name quite a few. I'm just going to let uh, Firefly, uh, <laughs> uh, Stargate SG-1, <laughs> had a terrible first episode. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, let's see. And you're, feel free to disagree. You, you might have liked Serenity. You might have liked Children of the Gods. Stargate Atlantis, no. Stargate Universe, fuck off. Those episodes were horrible. Bite me. Um, the universe got better. Kind of. It's still... Eh. I'd rather watch Atlantis. And Atlantis had Brainstorm. Hate that episode. Uh, but it had Dr. Tyson in it. So... And Bill Nye. Don't even get me started with Stargate. No. Mm -mm. I didn't even watch Origins. Ah, fuck off. No, bye. Anyway, episode 2. Oh, God. Mars again. Only this time they show the sense. Rebel. Uh, oh, God. Don't even get me started. Don't even fucking get me started with that one. Pro tip. When you program synthetics... Don't include Order 66 in their programming. Bad. And we're going to get to Commodore O. I have a feeling she has something to do with it. Admiral Clancy? I bet a hundred fucking dollars she is in the dark. Camp Commodore O didn't say shit to her. Anyway, I really don't remember what happened in 2. Uh. Shit. Oh yeah, uh. Walter Bishop's wife, Elizabeth Bishop, from Fringe, is a Romulan. She's also in episode one. She stays at Picard's Vineyard. If he didn't know who that was, that was frickin' Walter Bishop's wife, Elizabeth. Um, it took me a second. To, I recognized her. It took me a minute. Anyway, they go CSI on Dodge's apartment. Looking for a clue within a clue. Brilliant. Again, slow start. Slow fucking start to the series. How do you fuck this up? How? But, like I keep saying, it gets better. Because you actually get more behind the scenes. I didn't even mention Narek. God damn it. Narek's on the board cube trying to get the information from Dr. Asha. And, yeah, they were in episode one for a minute. They expand that in episode two because apparently they're uh, 
They're hooking up already. My God, I wish I could get women as fast as this dude did. I've known each other for a second. They're already sleeping together. Ah, uh, Romulan and a, a human scent. Mass Effect 2 style. But we'll get... We'll... I have a little comparison between this and Mass Effect 2 I'll talk about in a minute. So, Episode 2... You learn Commodore O. I'm going to backtrack. Picard goes to Starfleet. Has the fucking balls to say, hey, even though I had that shitty interview in episode one, I neglected to mention. Because everyone's talked about the fucking interview. The bitch from Alias interviewing Picard, and Picard gets all uppity. Oh, if you didn't know, that was Francie from Alias. You're welcome. Anyway. Anyway. He goes to Starfleet. He's like, I need a ship and a crew. Blah, 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 blah. If you think my rank of admiral is too high, I will be demoted to captain. And she's like, no, bro. You're done. Bye. Turns out, uh, the Tal Shiar Romulans are like a cover for something even worse, like the Zad Vash. And where the fuck did this come from? Oh, where the fuck did that come from? I've been watching TNG since day one. Wow, no mention of them. Mass Effect 2 and 1 and 3. The chick who voiced Dr. Chuck was, was a Tal Shiar Romulan. I don't remember her name, but she was... That's the chick who does the voice of Dr. Chuck was in Mass Effect, the entire trilogy. So basically, as I was getting to, Picard is looking for an artificial intelligence. Does this, does this sound familiar? Blade Runner. Okay, Blade Runner. Mass Effect. Shepard's looking for a Reaper. Of course, he doesn't know what to reaper at the time. Just like the difference, there are differences, obviously. But Picard is slowly assembling a team to go after a artificial intelligence. That's Mass Effect Two. It's fucking Blade Runner. Can you get any more unoriginal? Oh yeah, Borg Cube that you know colored green like the Matrix. Mentioning the Sub Matrix collapse. Yeah. Subtle. So apparently, Narek has a sister who is a human in disguise. Uh, she's a lieutenant. I can't remember her name. Anyway, she works under the chief of security, Commander O. Where the fuck? What happened to the first duty? The first duty of every Starfleet officer is to the truth, whether it's scientific truth or historical truth or personal truth. It is the guiding principle on which Starfleet is based. The first duty of every officer is to the truth. And Commander O is involved in this cover-up somehow. WTF, mofo. Do I hate this show? No. Believe it or not, all this bullcrap makes me really interested. Especially when the doctor from the Stargazer comes and confirms to Picard that he has that defect in the prior to low that Beverly mentioned in the series finale of The Next Generation. That's right. Old man Picard might actually be hallucinating all this. Eromotic syndrome. Damn. Because a lot of the fucky websites I, I watch... It's a tangent. They're only talking about the Easter eggs. Ooh, there's an archive in episode one that has Captain Picard Day. Wank, 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 wank. I'm in it for the story, not the damn callbacks. We get it. It says based on the next generation in the credits. He can move on. And for all the hype of Seven of Nine, where is she? Three episodes in, no seven of nine. Oh, episode three, we get Hugh. Hugh shows up. 
Actually, he's in two as well. And a blink if blink and you'll miss it scene with Dr. Asha. Anyway, what else happens in episode two? Oh, yeah. After the doctor meets him, he looks up to the stars, grabs his communicator, and calls for someone named Raffi. And the episode ends, I think, with him meeting Raffi. Yay! Episode 2 done! Com Commodore O! First duty! What's the first duty of every Starfleet officer? The first duty of every Starfleet officer is to the truth, whether it's scientific truth or historical truth or personal truth. It is the guiding principle on which Starfleet is based. Yeah, we're kind of betraying that code. Unless you're being forced to by the Romulans, but whatever. Uh, how the hell does she know about the Romulan plot, if there is one? Nobody knows. And then episode three came out Thursday. And I like episode three a hell of a lot better than the first two. He gets a ship. He gets a motley crew. He says engage. It's pretty much all you need to know. Again, Mars is mentioned. Again, I swear to God, they mentioned episode four. I'm going to bitch slap the show. Uh, but it's from the perspective of Picard and Raffi. Raffi was his first officer. Also in the short treks, Mars mentions the Mars attacks, but you know, I only care about TNG. The other treks can, you know, F off. So yeah, uh, episode three, <sighs> more of the same. You get a, you actually get to meet the pilot. He's a cool dude. Uh, the, <laughs> the best character in this freaking show, other than Picard, is the EMH. Which is really sad. Because I really don't like Raffi. I don't really care for Dr. Girardi. You know, she did kill a Romulan. Oh yeah, the Romulans finally had the balls to attack the Chateau. Called it. Episode 1. Called it. They attacked him at Starfleet. They're going to attack him at his house. Because he knows too much. And the whole Romulan hate synth thing... Okay, Romulans, what flies your ships? Do you fly your ships? Uh, ever heard of something called autopilot? What calculates your warp drive? I mean, do you do it, or is it something called an AI? So what drives your technology if you're afraid of fucking robots? Gladys would kick your ass. You fucking retards. That said, I don't hate this show. I really don't. Oh, and I'll... You learn more about the, the assimilated board. The XBs in this one. Dr. Asha interviews Rhonda, a former Romulan who was assimilated. And she recognizes that Soji is an android. Don't know how. Soji don't know how, because she was spewing off shit about crap she had no recollection of. Basically, uh, the name of the ship that was last assimilated by the cube. It happened to be that Romulan ship with Ramda. Uh, before the Matrix collapse. Sub-Matrix. Green board. Mm. Well... There is a theory on the internet that the Romulans created the Borg and blah, 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 blah. And they probably got that theory because both of them favor green. I don't believe it. Because TNG Season 2 had the episode Q Who where he Thanos snapped the Enterprise 7,000 light years and they met the Borg. Were they in Romulan space? Guinan said they attacked her people centuries ago. Or a thousand years ago, I can't remember which. So the Romulans could not have created them. Because <laughs> Did you not watch Q Who? 
Uh, and uh, he invented the snap before Thanos did. Just, just throwing that out there. So, episode three is the best one so far. Do I hate this series? No. Nope. And if I was to give episode two a rating, it'd be a six. And episode three is a solid nine. There's just too much CSI bullshit in <laughs> episode two. And I really can't stand Commodore O. Are you sure she's not a Romulan in disguise? She's supposed to be a Vulcan, for God's sakes. And yes, they are cousins. I did not forget. They're distantly related to the frickin' Vulcans. But I'm really glad that they brought Picard, or they brought Star Trek back to the post-supernova. Picard's timeline, the TNG timeline. So we'll get, eventually 7 and 9 is going to show up. Whenever. Whenever it's convenient. Um, and, shit. What's her name? And what's his face? Jonathan Franks. Riker and Troy. Oh my god, my memory's slipping. Um, but yeah, this show, looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. Um, my expectations are high. Um, this again, you are talking about a guy who actually liked Rise of Skywalker. F the uh, fanboys who hated it. I kind of like Dark Fate. I'm, I'm done listening to critics because there was nothing wrong with Dark Fate. Sorry. And yes, I did shit on it too. But after you're watching it twice, no. But they like glass, and glass was kind of boring. But I digress. Uh, when the series wraps after episode 10, I'll probably do another video. Uh, I know it's been a while since I made one. I've been really busy with work, and I've had some medical issues. And, um, yeah. I don't want to talk about that just yet. Let's just say it involves my kidneys. I'm not looking forward to 10 years from now. Anyway, this is Dan Tech USA. Sayonara. Oh, and uh, live long and prosper.